Greetings, and welcome to the weekly edition of the Safe Crypto Show. I'm your host, Tyler Jordan, with co-hosts Mike and Jason. Each episode attempts to cover a range of topics, beginning with a roundup of the top cryptos of the week. Next, a discussion of general crypto news and happenings, and then we consider new and interesting projects and ICOs, all followed by a brief discussion of the weekly tech update by MateSafe. Let's get started with the show. Safe Crypto Show Disclaimer. Please keep in mind at all times that we, the hosts and guests of the Safe Crypto Show, are not offering or giving investment advice. We only state our personal opinions and thoughts on our own interests. By watching, you agree to not hold us responsible for any losses you may incur by executing trades or by maintaining holds based upon the subjects discussed in our episodes. It is Friday, the 2nd of February, 2018. Today I'm joined by my co-host, Mike and Jason. Let's begin. Welcome, Mike and Jason. Thanks for joining the show today. How's it going? Hey, thanks for having me. Well, today we're, we're going to change the format of the show a bit. We're adding a, a new segment <coughs> called Movers and Shakers, which is going to cover some of the top gainers of the week. This week that's going to be a pretty small list. <laughs> it's been a pretty down week. So, I don't really have any leading news per se today, so I'm just going to jump right into the uh, top five cryptos. Um, Bitcoin still still number one. Probably going to be there for a little while longer, but uh, having a pretty bad week. Let's just have a look at the uh, have a look at the weekly chart here. I currently see it at eighty-seven thirty-two and a quarter. Now 23.48% for the seven day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, it wasn't able to onto that 10,000 that it was for a few weeks there. Oh, once it, once it big, hit, big South Korea drop. And once it hit below 10K, it kind of plummeted after that. It's been briefly below 10K before, though, and it didn't drop like this. There doesn't seem to be any significant yeah. news aside from the tether news, which we'll talk about later. Um, that's. Yeah. No, it's it's a bit it's a bit odd to me. <coughs> Go ahead. Yeah, the market cap ended up going from about almost 600 down to where it's at now at 422. So losing 175 million uh, in the past week. That's probably a, a big chunk of it and whatnot because it's all been primarily in the past two or three days that it's lost that from the uh, almost 600 that it was earlier this week. Yeah, and whatnot. So, yeah, just a month ago, it was at eight hundred. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, that was. <laughs> Let's uh, go on to Ethereum now. Here and a bad January. Ethereum's not doing quite as bad as the others. It's only down ten. Yeah, but well. it's, still, it's still up above the uh, nine hundred dollar mark that it was about a month ago. It's had a large so drop. The, large drop the last few hours, but um, I mean, so many ICOs are done through Ethereum. So I reckon if people want to get into those, they've got to they've got to hold some Ethereum. So uh, I think, I think it could be part of the stability. It's got it's got a use case, you know. Um, anyway, yeah, I reckon that's a big part of its stability. Yeah. Let's just move on to that banking token next. <laughs> <laughs> have a look at Ripple. That below a dollar oh, banking a, token. Now. Yeah, it died. It's up to $3.80 there a couple of weeks back. What happened here? Which one's oh, wait that? Wait a second. You mean that it's not being used? Ripple. Uh, uh, Ripple. Ripple, yes. Yes. It's your favorite coin. It is. <laughs> <clears throat> now, I've, I've sold all the made, and I've put it all into Ripple. At its high. And no, I'm yeah. willing and gnashing my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is going to kill me. <laughs> yeah, I will not. I will not. I will wonder what happened to you. What kind of insanity has overtaken you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, again, I, I don't know why why anyone would want to, to buy Ripple. Uh, Ripple historically has been pretty stable, but uh, the last the last month it's uh, completely gone insane. So last month and a half. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why anyone would want it, frankly. Well, it was up at uh, 23, 25 cents before all the craziness happened. So I guess if you got it back then, you're still up in the green. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. But not quite as much on the green when you're going from a 10x to a 3x multiplier. I don't know. If it's yeah. over three bucks, I'm probably out at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I got it in the in the 20 cent range. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would have had to have gone up really fast for me to have held it all that whole time. I think you've got to have a use case. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. In the end, if it doesn't it have a use case. Running. Yeah, with the trading fees and the, you know, how much it costs for a transaction, even Bitcoin's kind of running out of that use case and whatnot now. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not useful when, you you know, you can't buy a cup of coffee for four bucks from, from Starbucks and pay... You know, twenty-two dollars in, in fees to transfer the four bucks. So, well, you know, uh, I don't think we ever talked about it, but uh, the Steam Gaming Network they they stopped taking uh, Bitcoin because of the large transaction fees. That's right. Uh, technically, though, the transaction fees are dropping. Um, the Lightning Network has been started, and Segwit continues to slowly gain. And uh, the percentage of it's using it, so um, the, the fees have been dropping, and uh, hopefully that will continue. Um, we're now Unfortunately, they've already kind of they've already kind of burned some bridges though with some companies. Well, they have like the Steam gaming platform. They you have. Know, yeah. so. and they are they are gaining. One of the things we're going to be talking about in our news today is uh, they, they have gained a, a big one, a big fish, which should help with uh, its use case, but. Um, We'll get to that in a bit. So Bitcoin Cash has really been following in the in the shadow of Bitcoin, not uh, not looking so hot at the moment. <coughs> yep. Still good volume. I'm still uh, favorable to Bitcoin it's Cash big, versus yeah. Bitcoin. I'm not, uh, but and last in the top five, Cardano. Pull up the seven day chart. Doesn't look a whole know, like lot different. That, uh, that that dollar thirty or whatever uh, looks pretty good at this point. But you got well, got some profits on. Yeah, yeah, that was back then. But uh, as far as for where it's at now, I don't know what's the uh, longer term. It's still got some good. Oh yeah, sure. to it, but you know, right now it's just right. hang on to what you got. If you got some, you may end up. It if you lock in the losses at the prices that it's at now. So, yeah. Well, there's. Anyways, that's the top five, same as last week. Yeah. There is a little more competition coming into the uh, the smart contract space. We're going to be talking about that today in the show. And Cardano, being a smart contract platform, uh, will probably feel the heat of that in the in the future as some of the other up and comers start to up and come. So, <clears throat> the next little segment is the movers and shakers, uh, some high market cap cryptos with big gains this week. Uh, well, they were big gains until today. <laughs> <laughs> so we waited to do the show today. Yes, yes. <laughs> so what we do is we uh, on coin market cap, there is a, a trending drop down and under there, there's the gainers and losers. And uh, I'm not going to cover the losers. Um, there's always a lot of losers. I'm not so interested in the losers. I'm, I'm not. I always take this with a, a grain of salt because uh, there's a lot of pumpers out there, and a lot of the reason for these going up radically is because they're being pumped. That's not always the case, but you know, take this with a grain of salt. This this information. Uh, I'm not going to to cover the small cap ones either because they're. They're always up and down really radically. Well, not always, but in a lot of cases. So I'm going to stick with the more higher market cap or interesting, really interesting ones. Uh, so this week we've got Pillar. Uh, I'm going to discuss them. They've got a really great team behind them. Um, kind of like MadeSafe, they're, they're building a, an app platform, and it's promising privacy and more security. So 
They're, they're a very interesting platform. I, I at one point owned Pillar. I, I got in on their ICO. I sold out, unfortunately, at 17 cents, which made me quite a handy profit, to be honest. But uh, oh, I missed out on a, on a huge, uh, huge run up there. It's now at a dollar 42. Yesterday it was like I think a dollar 60. So still up 32.8 percent for the week. They're uh, flying high. I, I don't know how long we'll be able to maintain that. Maybe they'll keep going up. Maybe not. It's it's a bit frustrating and sad for me to see Pillar doing so well. I mean, I like to see them doing well, but I, relative to where MadeSafe is, um, I'd really like to see Made come up. Made's put in so much work into their project. It's much more advanced than what Pillar's project is. Sorry, Pillar, but, I mean, you just really can't compare the two. And and yet, Pillar, I believe, is, now has a higher market cap than, than May. I could be wrong about that. I'll just open that up and have a look. It, there's, there's a lot of that in this area because, in, you know, in the crypto markets, people people buy on uh, on rumor and talk and it, just a matter of the attention something gets as opposed to it's really its, it's merits sometimes, which is uh, frustrating. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot of... I was just going to say they, they, they got to buy, uh, you know, about 170 million on market cap. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, Made has has been quite a bit higher recently, so Made's down quite a bit at the moment. But uh, yeah, it's it's frustrating. I think people don't pay too much attention to the technicals. They they often just jump jump onto the bandwagon, and that's that's one of the reasons the markets are so volatile too. So it's uh, it's sad to see that. Anyway. The next one on our list is Nano, which was formerly Rayblox. They've now rebranded, as we predicted they were going to, uh, I think on our, when we discussed Rayblox a few episodes back. Um, they're up 14.44% uh, today, well, this hour. <laughs> uh, you know, we're still... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll, a hodler on on Nano at the moment. Uh, I'm pretty keen on when it gets listed on Binance. I, I expect uh, it'll gain more traction there and zip up more. Of course, some of that might be getting priced in, but being branded Nano is going to bring in a lot of the pumpers and dumpers who, who like short little names like that. They're gonna you're gonna see a lot more talk about Nano now, and uh, I I can see Nano going into the even into the top ten. Briefly, uh, I don't know that it's uh, technically. I, I think it it's uh, still rather untested, but it may be superior to Bitcoin in a lot of ways. It's a pure currency, and uh, yeah, very super fast transactions. Perhaps a little more anonymity because of how a blockchain is is constructed, <clears throat> but uh, super fast, uh, very scalable. I don't think, as far as a currency goes, I don't think there's anything faster than Nano at the moment. So it's a uh, it's very interesting technology, and good to see uh, it it going up and getting some some recognition for the work that the developers have put in for it. Next one on our list is Eternity. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. I have to confess I don't know anything about what Eternity does. <laughs> I didn't uh, it or the next one. Um, I didn't look into them. Uh, I just know that they're higher market cap projects. Do you, do you guys know what Eternity is about? I haven't looked at it. Yeah. So yep. it's it's a bit of a it's been moving up a bit, um, and it's a higher market cap one. Might be something to look into. And the last one on the list is Populous. That's a uh, it's a very popular token. I don't also I, I did look into it at one point, but I can't remember what they're about. So, interesting to see them uh, going up. Maybe that's news, maybe it's not. I don't know. That's all we have for the movers and shakers this week. Obviously, it's been a very bearish week. And uh, hopefully, we'll see some turnaround next week. Going into our just next... Just huddle, people. Just, just huddle, yeah. That's, that's what we're doing. Mostly, we're just huddling or yeah. shifting around, preparing for uh, some new ICOs. <coughs> Topic number two is our new segment. So, 
Our leading news for the week is it's been revealed that Bitfinex and Tether received subpoenas from U.S. regulators, uh, news of which only leaked out two days ago. And uh, some of this may be driving some of the, the downturn in the markets. A lot of people, when they are switching in and out of crypto, will buy Tether as a way to hang on to something more stable in terms of other prices outside of the crypto market, or or if they're just concerned there's a downturn, they'll go on to Tether. I, I don't know. i curious to know what they're doing now. The markets are going down. Are they still buying Tether? It's uh, unclear. So a few things are going, going on here. Uh, Bitfinex and Tether are both, uh, they're separate companies, I believe, but they're managed by the same, they have the same CEO, and uh, they're managed maybe by the same group, not really sure, but um, yeah, there's been a lot of speculation for a number of months now about whether Tether is really backed or not. What Tether does, what they claim to do, is for every Tether token issued, they keep a dollar in a bank account somewhere, and uh, they had a company that was uh, some account an accountant firm that they'd hired that was supposedly helping prove that they were keeping their reserves in place, although they weren't doing a full technical audit, apparently. But now uh, Tether has effectively let them go or fired them, and we're unsure about what's going on there. Uh, these subpoenas, though, from U.S. regulators, this is quite interesting, because apparently these subpoenas were issued in December, and we're only now just uh, learning about, about this. What's additionally interesting is that both Bitfinex and Tether are not U.S.-based companies. So it's a bit unclear what uh, authority the U.S. government has to regulate or subpoena, even subpoena these, these companies. Um, overall, Tether is looking to be a bit of a scary proposition. <laughs> uh, I don't know what people are going to do because... Part of the reason that uh, Tether is so popular, in my opinion, is that if you if you cash out to actual U.S. dollars, <coughs> say say on Coinbase or something, then that's going to show up as as a real taxable kind of thing. Versus if you are switching into Tether on some foreign exchange like Bitfinex, then the U.S. government isn't really going to be aware that you've uh, <laughs> that you've you know earned a profit on on one thing or another. So I reckon that's one of the reasons Tether is popular. It's it's a way, and it's also easy to, a lot of exchanges now have Tether built in as a, as a pair with another crypto, so it's quite easy to switch in and out of Tether. So it's it's a bit concerning what's going to happen. There, there are some other projects now that are working to make a, a stable kind of crypto. I'm not uh, privy on how they're doing that, but their their aim is to make a stable crypto. I guess what they mean is stable relative to the U.S. dollar, or or another major fiat currency like the yuan or the ruble or something. <clears throat> but uh, we'll have to see what happens there. It's it's very interesting, and it could be that uh, some people are speculating anyway that uh, this is. One of the reasons why the markets are turning down now. I, I don't know if that's true. I'm, I'm a bit un unclear about what's driving the, the downturn in the market at the moment. Any thoughts? It's definitely causing uh, a lot of ruffles and waves and stuff with the you know general consensus of the way things are. So you know, a lot of people are just saying, just hang on and ride it out. You know, everything always comes back up, sort of a deal. But you know, that takes some time. It can't take a long time for it to do that to turn around. I mean, yeah, I'm one of those people that I'm one of those people that use that as a when the market starts downturning, put my money, hold it in tether, buy stuff when it's low, and then you know, similar to what's happening right now. So. Mm -hmm. Well, our next uh, news item is uh, about Robinhood. That's an existing securities trading app. And they're moving into the crypto scene, bringing with them all their experience 
not only of trading software, but of the regulatory space. They're attracting a lot of new and existing crypto traders because they're offering zero fees and are a trusted name. Uh, my take on this is that more and more uh, money is going to flow into the crypto space, but uh, I'm just, I'm frankly, I'm a bit shocked and, and befuddled by the downturn this week, but it seems like there's been a lot of good news, and yet it still goes down. So, I don't know if it's panic. Anyway, so, Robinhood's uh, an interesting one. Uh, this isn't to be confused with Cobbinhood, however. Cobbinhood is a new company that is also offering a zero-fee trading service. I believe that Cobbinhood took its name from Robinhood before Robinhood got into the crypto space, um, which they just announced last week, I think. So, uh, Cobbinhood probably thought, oh, we'll capitalize on the, the name recognition of Robinhood, and and we'll do the same zero fee kind of trading service except for cryptos but now Robinhood has uh, come in and trounced on their thunder now there is just from what I read is there's just five, five US states that are participating in in this California, Massachusetts, Missouri, Montana and New Hampshire in, in Robinhood in Robinhood yes yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think they, they intend to expand it. Uh, I went to Robinhood's website last night, and uh, they don't they don't allow for Australia at the moment, but they are working on it. So I think they are looking to expand um, everywhere with their crypto trading platform once they get that up and running. But uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. Cobbinhood is already in uh, available in a lot of places, so I'm signed up with them. Um, they seem to be a decent uh, exchange. They, they're still working out some bugs, I believe, but uh, an interesting, interesting platform. Nice to have zero fees. That's, I guess, that's the the main thing. Interestingly, with Robinhood, I mean, they're saying over one million people have signed up for early access. So, given that they've got such a, a large base already of uh, securities traders, uh, it's seems to me like this is going to bring a lot more capital into the crypto space. Anyway, on to our next news segment. Venezuela now legalizes Bitcoin and cryptocurrency mining and announces the pre-sale of their new PetroCoin. <laughs> it's an interesting picture they've got here on the uh, Cointelegraph uh, page for it. <laughs> it's got a picture of Maduro holding a little golden coin. It's quite silly. <laughs> Venezuela's government has said cryptocurrency mining is now completely legal as it plans the pre-sale of its petro coin for the next month. In comments during a TV address quoted by local news outlet Telesur, the country's newly dubbed cryptocurrency superintendent, Carlos Vargas, confirms that citizens mining Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies were not breaking the law. Oh, this is a... Uh, it's good news for Venezuelans. They can now go go full full hog into the cryptocurrency space and start mining. Now, I think this is great news for them. They're suffering dramatically. Under yeah. A lot of oppression. I don't think it can get much worse for them. No. Well, yeah. I, I would hope not, anyway. Well, well <laughs> so, let's go that way. <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is great for them. I, I Financially-wise, this is great for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, having having just something they can now trade, you know, legally with as well for for food, <laughs> it's good. It's very good. Uh, I think it's going to be very interesting watching uh, Venezuela's crypto experiment as it uh, continues forward. I'm not clear on on what the value of their of their coin is going to be. They say each coin is going to be valued based. It's going to be equivalent to one barrel of oil. Now, their oil isn't uh, considered the best oil in the world. It's a uh, heavy sour crude, but uh, and and the price of oil is isn't doing so well these days with the uh, U.S. supplies increasing. Uh, but um, and they have a hundred million supply of this petro. That's what uh, it says. Yeah, that's how many they're going to have. So. Uh, at least so, initially, it's uh, kind of interesting. It, it it is a it is going to be essentially controlled coin. So, 
it's not going to be a decentralized yeah. coin, and they can issue more, I suppose, at any point yeah. they want. What was that? I was going to say, this is about $6 billion market value at $100 million supply. Right. Well, we'll see. I mean, uh, again, since it is uh, heavy sour crude, it's probably per barrel not going to be as valuable as what a barrel of sweet light crude is. So, I don't know. Well, I think the price of oil, as it's quoted, is often sweet light crude, but you can look. There's different, there's different prices for different grades of oil. I'm not sure what Venezuelan crew goes for. Okay, on to our next story. This one is uh, another big bonus for the crypto community in general, and Bitcoin in particular. I, I think it may take some time for this to sink in for a lot of traders. The Square Cash app releases Bitcoin buy-sell option to almost all users. So they're, they're now enabling Bitcoin... Or, or soon to enable Bitcoin payments. Now, uh, this move by Square Inc. indicates they're moving to allow retailers everywhere who use the Square uh, POS system, that's the point of sale system used by retailers, to accept <laughs> Bitcoin as a form of payment. Uh, this, this could really increase the use case for Bitcoin. Uh, and hypothetically, if this works out, they could be adding other cryptocurrencies as well. Uh, my company over here, Aurora Herb Farm, we sell skincare products. Um, we actually use the Square app as well, and the, there's Square proof of, I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> POS proof of stake. No, it's point of sale. Uh, we use their point of sale system at, at local markets here. So it would be really awesome to be able to allow people to, to use use that to uh, not not many of our customers would use Bitcoin, but to be able to say, hey, we accept Bitcoin would be really awesome, I think. Yeah, you should offer that. Uh, I reckon as soon as as soon as they have that here, we will. I think what they've done is they've allowed their their app, which has the allows you to store the, the cash that you've earned in, in whatever your local currency is. Um, I believe that the app itself now is going to allow the, the trading of Bitcoin. So... I don't think their proof of uh, sorry their point of sale system yet does this. I'll have to check, but I believe that this is a step toward that. So it could be that once they get this this thing working out for them well, they might add that to their their point of sale system. In fact, I, I can't see why they would add Bitcoin to their app unless that was their intention. So th this is pretty huge because Square. Uh, is used by a huge number of retailers, and this could really bring a lot of retailers into the into the crypto space, big time. So, uh, this is really bullish for Bitcoin, guys. Uh, I don't, I don't see how it couldn't be. <coughs> Use case is is king, in my opinion, and where we're going. So, this is this is a this is a huge thing, and I reckon it's. People need to need to be aware of what's happening. It's big news. Our next uh, bit of news. Oh, no, that's not the one. Let's just skip over here. The next one. This is more of a bit of a validation from my perspective as well as Roger Ver's perspective. <laughs> uh, the U.S. Government Institute. This is NIST. Just read my notes here. U.S. government agency NIST affirms what many of us knew all along, that Bitcoin Cash is the original Bitcoin, and that what's called Bitcoin now is the hard fork. This is quite, uh, I found it quite amusing. I don't, uh, I rarely agree with anything coming out of the U.S. government, but, but in this case, I do agree. So they've, NIST is a National Institute of Standards and Technology under the U.S. Department of Commerce. And they've done an analysis of, of Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. They, they did a white, uh, not a white, something like a white paper, basically, a document entitled Blockchain Technology Overview. And I guess it's for the government types to understand blockchain technology better. And they've, uh, they've written, quote, When SegWit was activated, it caused a hard fork 
and all the mining nodes and users who did not want to change started calling the original Bitcoin blockchain Bitcoin Cash. So there you have it. Um, Bitcoin Cash is the original Bitcoin, and Bitcoin as it is today is not the original Bitcoin. I think, you know, I don't know, I'm not big on calling government an authority, but I think if you want to, if you if you are a person who does consider government authority to be <laughs> real and recognizable, there's uh, your definitive proof. And our last bit of news. I always thought. I, go ahead. I was going to say I always thought after after they I heard about the Bitcoin fork, I was figuring, you know, why did they call the new one Bitcoin Cash when that's what the developers wanted, and then they ended up going in leaving the previous version you know, that doesn't include all the updates that the developers wanted to put in. Why are they calling? Why doesn't the new one, the developers, why don't they get a name? Which one is Bitcoin? Why is it up to the exchanges? Why is it up to the miners? I always had that question even before. Well, I guess before the NIST got involved. The exchanges own their exchange, and so it's up to the exchanges because they get to decide what they're going to call these different forks. I, I, I do suppose, though, that, that the development team behind Bitcoin is very large, and uh, Blockstream is a big company that is supporting the development of Bitcoin, and I believe, you know, they probably have a lot of political sway uh, in different areas, and so I reckon that's, that's why things played out the way they did. That's my, that's my best guess. Awesome. So our last bit of news this week, uh, uh, this is a follow-up to previous week's news stories. South Korea Finance Minister Kim dong Yeon has reaffirmed that the government will not ban or otherwise suppress cryptocurrency in the country. So I think that, uh, that pretty much seems like a nail in the coffin for the rumors going around that uh, South Korea was going to initiate some sort of ban. Again, this is good news for cryptos. Uh, I don't know why it's down. It doesn't mean it's not <laughs> going to be severely regulated, though. Oh, yeah. Well, we covered that last week. Um, the regulatory yep. overhaul is underway. Uh, they're, they're moving in in full force to uh, regulate the exchanges in South Korea and uh, to monitor suspicious transactions between the banks and the exchanges. So... Yep, they they are going to they're going to be raking people over the coals <laughs> who've, who've profited uh, madly over the past uh, past couple of months, past those, few months. Those inside traders. Those in well, <laughs> those traders who tried who thought they were going to get away tax free are, or maybe not. We'll see what happens. Well, we might not see what happens. It'll yep. kind of be an underground thing, but yes, tax man will be sitting on a beach earning twenty percent. <laughs> that's, that, that's no joke. <laughs> we take all the risk; they get twenty percent. What's that's, up with that? That's man? right. <laughs> mm -hmm. You get to live here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gee, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, I figure it could it's be worse news. So. so our next uh, segment is the ICO segment, and this week we're going to be talking about credits. I'm just going to read from the ICO bench. Uh, credits platform offers new and unique technical implementation of blockchain, blockchain technology, smart contracts, data protocol, and has its own internal cryptocurrency. It is a platform with completely new technical network capabilities, speed, cost of transactions, and total number of operations per sec. Okay, I'm not going to read this. This is poorly written. So <laughs> the key points for credits are as follows. It is a smart contract platform utilizing Java as its core contract language. It has very low fees for contract processing, cheaper than Ethereum. It has super high speed capabilities and is highly scalable, far surpassing the current version of Ethereum. They already have an MVP, a minimum viable product, out, and they have a, a really good rating on ICO Bench and a large dedicated team behind them. So their rating here on ICO Bench is 3.6. Um, 
until we... Eos scoops him up. Well, yeah, Eos. Th- this is interesting because Eos is promising, uh, I believe, the exact same number of transactions per second that Credits has. So, Credits has really scooped Eos in this. Um, well, uh, the the. The problem for credits, of course, is that EOS has a vast war chest of capital, and credits does not and will not. Um, their uh, their soft cap for their ICO is 15 million, and their hard cap is only 20 million. Now, I really respect that. Uh, they're not they're not out trying to rip people off. They're saying this is what you know we think the value of what we what we're doing is, and uh, and they've been really honest about that. So, frankly, uh. I'm really keen on these guys for a couple of reasons. One, because they are honest. I've actually, full disclosure, had a brief conversation chat with the uh, CEO of Credits on LinkedIn. <coughs> he contacted me because I've got this show, and I guess, you know, as marketers go, he's he's trying to let, get the word out about, about his company. And uh, I guess he's probably contacted a lot of people who've got to advertise that they've got shows on on uh, LinkedIn. Anyhow, um, they, they just seem like a really good, good group. I'm going to just go over here to their uh, to their their team. Let's see if I can shrink that down a bit. They have a really large team. And it, I don't know how many, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18... 21, 24, uh, 27, 30, 33, 34 people on their team. For for a startup company building, I mean, that's that's a really big team. Uh, I got it, and they've got uh, a nice little advisory group as well. So their their team alone, the size of their team alone, tells me they're very serious about what they're doing, and. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed with them. Their, their website's credits.com. It's a good domain name. Uh, I think they're going to do very, very well. I think, uh, and not offering investment advice here, but I'm going to throw down hard on this ICO because with a hard cap of only $20 million, uh, that's going to put them... They, where does that put them? Well below the top 100 in terms of market cap. So they're, they're going to be, I'll have to go down to the view all thing to find somebody, uh, a coin with a $20 million market cap. There we go. Let's right around in here. So they're going into the 15 to $20 million. They're, they're going to make their hard cap. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind. So that's currently number 337, uh, you know, on the on coin market cap. And they're easily, you know, probably a top 20 cryptocurrency, in my opinion. So, th- this has, in my opinion, again, huge profit potential. Uh, I can't I can't imagine why I wouldn't uh, throw in hard for this coin. I think they're, they're must, they must be a super humble group of people. Uh, to, there's Igor's uh, the CEO. He's the guy I've uh, chatted with on LinkedIn. <coughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about credits and what they're doing. Uh, I think they're going to have a really hard time with uh, competing with EOS. This uh, smart contract space is becoming quite tight. Uh, how many platforms are needed? Uh, currently, more platforms are needed because Ethereum just can't handle what's going on. But Ethereum, uh, I believe they do 15, 20 transactions per second. It's, it's pretty small. And credits is is saying a million transactions per second and scalable even higher. So, yeah, it's it's big. I think it's these guys uh, got a got a very interesting project, and I recommend people look into it. So drawbacks for an ICO, I don't really see any. For long term hodling, I think there's a large amount of competition in the space now. So, uh, how many platforms are needed or wanted? Well, I've discussed that. Um, as we discussed in last week's episode, EOS's war chest is possibly going to give it dominance. Um, 
Yeah, I, I don't really see many drawbacks. Uh, I think for flipping, this this is an epic token. For long-term hodling, uh, I suppose if you're getting in in the ICO, it's still an epic token. If you get in and it's already in the top 20, probably questionable as to how, how great a return you would get on that. But um, anyway, white paper is going to be linked in the show notes, uh, the website and the ICO bench page also in the show notes. Jason, Mike, any thoughts on this on this coin? I really like what it's doing, and it has a cool name for all the people that say that all you need is a cool name to pump. Yeah, so. well... The pumpers, the pumpers like the cool hey, everybody always talk about. Everybody always talks about in the future where you just transfer credits, and they got it. So that's they got true. That, that's know, true. All the book writers from the way back in the day. Hey, you'll just transfer credits from one account to another. There you go. They've already got it. So, dips. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> because yeah, dips on that, board. Yeah. So they got that going for them as well. Because of the transaction speeds they're offering, it can be used. For everything, you know, it's uh, you know, with Ethereum, it because so many people use Ethereum for smart contracts, it's really become very sluggish, and uh, and the transact, you know, the amount of gas you have to pay uh, to gas is the the fuel on the Ethereum network, and the amount of gas you have to pay to do it, which is basically the transaction fees, is uh, you know, goes up. You have to pay more to to get your transaction through. So having something like like credits and EOS, if you know, if and when EOS well I don't think there's a matter of if, but when EOS gets uh, gets up, <clears throat> you know, the these systems are gonna have such high transaction speeds that they'll be fully utilizable as a currency as well as a smart contract platform. So uh, you know the use cases for uh, it the problem is, you know, if if you wanna Use a, a coin for for buying and selling uh, just things in the retail space. Bitcoin is great for that. It's got a lot of retailers who are still accept it, and more may be coming online. But if you then want to buy an ICO, well, then you have to you have to switch to a smart contract platform. So you've got to you've got to trade, and you've often got to pay a fee unless you're using Cobbinhood or Robinhood now. But in most in most exchanges, you've got to pay a fee, and you've got to go through the trouble and hassle of converting. With with these EOS and credits now um, having such high transaction speeds, you'll just be able to hold one currency. I think in the end, that's what I'd like to see. I don't want to have to transfer between different coins. I'd like to just use one platform. Sooner or later, I think there is going to come to be one platform that dominates. It's might take 50 years <laughs> the current rate of the explosion of platforms coming out ultimately we here on the safe crypto show are big supporters of made safe and we think made safe is going to be that platform it also will be a smart contract platform in addition to all the other things that it enables so uh, anyway speaking of that let's now go on to the made safe update so i'll just step through the highlights here let me just uh Close out these credits windows here and go to the made safe update. So, <clears throat> the highlights they will be using uh, the additional amount of funds they raised for the SafeCoin video CEP, that's a community engagement program, to work on two different videos. The first video on SafeCoin as planned, and a new one on the safe consensus mechanism. So, that's, that's good news. Uh, more more ways to, you know, if they're able to, to do more with the funds they have to explicate the the mechanisms and system of made safe. That's or of safe net rather. That's uh, that's great. Number two, they are launching a community member of the month competition. More details can be found uh, in this post. So links to to these highlights will be in the show notes, <coughs> and links to the links are in the show notes too. Uh, the first version of the safe UX. UX means user experience. That's some kind of developer lingo. So it's a, a guide, guideline document for developing apps. So if you want to develop an app for the safe network, they've got guidelines for, for their user experience. So most big platforms have will develop something like that for app developers. The front-end team is releasing a new version of safe node app. 
as well as a new version of Peruse, the custom browser that will eventually replace the Safe Beaker browser. You can now download the latest version of Peruse. The routing team has outlined the JIRA tasks for Milestone 1 implementation. I'm not sure what they mean by Milestone 1 implementation. JIRA is a system of managing uh, software development. It's a, it's a, I'm not sure if it's a free system or not, but it's available through Atlassian, which is a, a group that offers a lot of tools for software developers. <coughs> um, uh, the tasks are still work in progress and being updated as they're constantly continuing to improve the design. And the last uh, highlight, the Crust team is in the process of bringing encryption to Crust. Some parts are already functioning, but a few other things still need to be considered. Bootstrap connections, land discovery messages, address echo service request response encryption, etc. And these are the non-technical notes. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, so for greater detail and the technical updates, Please check the link in the show notes. I am going to briefly go through the marketing details here. There have been some really interesting stuff, updates, and articles that, that came out this week. Um, work continues on the new Made Safe website. We have received the first, just reading from the website update page here, we have received the first version of the sitemap and wireframes back from the website agency this week. We are now pulling together our comments and sending these back to the agency by the end of this week as per the project plan. Uh, the Community Engagement Program Summary. There was a significant donation to our SafeCoin video CEP as the deadline expired, taking the total raised to uh, 9.4 thousand pounds. That's uh, British pounds. Across a combination of MADE, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ether, after some discussion, we've now agreed that the winner, Hypercube Studios, uh, the winner of the, the, they were chosen to make the videos, will use the additional funds in order to work on two different videos. First video on SafeCoin is planned and went on the Safe Consensus Mechanism. We'd also like to thank various members of the community who spent their time by submitting translations for the most recent video. That's good, it'll be in, have translations for different languages. So, uh, to celebrate our amazing community and to have a bit of fun, we're launching a community member of the month competition so that we can highlight people who have gone above and beyond the call of duty every month and supporting the network and helping to grow our community. Each month we'll be looking for nominations and the winner will receive a unique prize. More details can be found in this post. Uh, a few of the team uh, will be out at the FOSDEM 2018 in Brussels, Belgium. This uh, weekend we're... Just listing the, the name of a user, we'll be giving a talk on demystifying Rust parsing. Uh, okay, so here's the, what I find interesting: uh, articles. Finally, uh, so the Guardian published a great article today on the battle to reclaim internet from our giant technology overlords, following a visit to the headquarters and interviews with uh, David Irvine and Nick Lambert, the CEO and COO of MadeSafe. Uh, as you can see, the number of comments on the Guardian site, this is a high-profile article on a top media site, so please share, comment, and join in the discussions online wherever you can. So, yeah, um, have a look at that link, people. Um, it's, it's not specific just to SafeNet. It's discussing uh, several different uh, projects, I think three or four projects, that are working to develop an alternative to our centralized Internet structure. But it's got a really great piece on made safe and what they're doing, building SafeNet, and uh, share that around and get the word out. So, that's all I have for this week. Do you uh, have anything? Last, last words? Uh, Mike, Jason? Uh, very informative. Very informative. I liked it. Good stuff. Well, that's all we have for today, folks. I'd like to thank both our viewers and my co-hosts for joining me today. We hope you found the episode informative and helpful. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share a video with others. And tune in next week for another interesting episode.